So I'll try to go through them as quickly as possible. I have about seven <laughs> that uh, people want me to respond to. First of all, the question of a moratorium. We've been calling for a moratorium on foreclosures, evictions, and utility shutoffs, but we've also been calling on a moratorium on debt service payments to the banks because it is the banks that are strangling the urban areas here in the United States. And Cheryl Labash, uh, who is in Detroit, who everybody here knows, sent out four articles just this last past week that was written by Comrade Sam between 1975 and 1977 on the crisis here in New York, calling for a moratorium on debt service payments to the banks. Now in Detroit, they're trying to draw an analogy between what happened here during the 1970s and what is going on in Detroit, saying that, well, why are the people in Detroit so opposed to the appointment of an emergency manager, why they're opposed to the imposition of this consent decree? The people in New York uh, accepted it, and New York is better today for it. But the situation in New York and the situation in the United States during the 1970s is not the same situation that we're facing today in the 21st century in Detroit or anywhere else throughout the capitalist world. The crisis is much more severe. And in New York, New York was bailed out during the 1970s. They're not talking about bailing out Detroit. They're talking about imposing further austerity measures to the city and to other cities throughout the state of Michigan. And we want to make that very clear. And this is why we have called as a demand through the Moratorium Now Coalition for a federal bailout of Detroit. They bailed out the banks. They bailed out the auto companies. Damn it, they need to bail out Detroit. They need to bail out the workers who built the auto industry and who built that city for decades. Also, I want to mention as well, Schools and emergency management. As one of the comrades mentioned, they started out with the school system, imposing privatization on the schools. They've done it in Detroit and they've done it in other areas. It has not helped students whatsoever. In fact, the charter schools, the existence of charter schools, they don't even do research to determine the results of whether or not charter education is equal to or superior to public education. It's an ideological position that they are pushing. They don't care whether the results are good or not. They want charter schools so they can bust the teachers unions, so they can bring about a situation where they can force large numbers of oppressed and working class uh, children out of public education because as Fred has commented in the past, they don't need an educated workforce right now to impose low wage capitalism. Also, I wanted to mention the whole question of George Clooney and Sudan. I've been following this very closely. What he's talking about has nothing to do with what's actually going on now in Sudan. They partition Sudan the same way now they're working on partitioning Libya. It only strengthens imperialism. Anytime you have the European Union and NATO that is growing in number and military strength, the United States that is becoming more militaristic and more imperialistic all over the world. How can Africa survive? How can it compete even though they have oil with these imperialist blocks? It's impossible. And that's why they're promoting partition and division. And Clooney is focusing on the government in Khartoum. He is not talking about the newly created Republic of South Sudan where most of the fighting is taking place right now in Sudan because South Sudan is not a sustainable nation state. And I think that's very, very important. We've written about that that over the years, a lot of the oil is there, but a lot of the fighting that is going on right now is because of the divisions that exist within the newly created Republic of South Sudan, which is closely allied to the United States. The fighting is going on in South Kordofan, it's going on in, in Jongle, and uh, all we have to do is go back and read the articles from Workers World, and it will explain that. Another point, of course, is Uganda, Ethiopia, and Kenya. What is their role in Africa? They're all neo-colonial states. Uganda is heavily financed and armed by U.S. imperialism and by Britain. Ethiopia, after they overthrew the revolution in the early 1990s, has been used as a, as a police force against Somali and, and lately against Eritrea again. They just launched an attack in Eritrea just uh, yesterday against the government there because they will not go along with what imperialism wants to do in the Horn of Africa. And you see how things change. During the 70s, the party had a political and ideological position calling for the unification of the uh, National Liberation Movement in Eritrea and the revolution in Ethiopia. When the revolution in Ethiopia was overthrown uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union and also the uh, Comic-Con countries in Eastern Europe, 
Ethiopia became an outpost for U.S. imperialism. They heavily arm them, they heavily finance them, and they do the bidding of world imperialism. That's why they're in Somalia right now. That's why they have uh, invaded Somalia twice in the last five years. And this is why they're also harassing the small nation of Eritrea. The same thing with Kenya. Kenya, and we've written about this in the paper, invaded Somalia back in October. They sent over 2,000 troops there. They're being backed by the U.S., Britain, France, as well as the State of Israel. The U.S. is involved in hundreds of drone attacks against Somalia. Hundreds of people have been killed by these U.S. drones uh, in Somalia over the last several months. And this is something that's not being covered other than in our paper and, and, and a few other uh, outlets such as Press TV out of Iran. So these are very, very important issues. Uh, the U.S. is using AFRICOM, uh, neo-colonizing uh, the African continent in an effort to reap oil. They're, you know now they're drilling oil in one of the breakaway provinces of Somalia in Puntland. There's tremendous oil there, and that's why, they're in, that's why they're in Somalia. In Uganda, they discovered oil uh, over the last several years. There's a whole oil rush that's going on right now there as well. And finally, um, Kony 2012 is another ploy to bring about more military intervention in Central and East Africa. We published an article last year in October. Uh, October the uh, 14th, the Obama administration announced that it was sending 100 military advisors and special forces uh, into central, four countries in Central Africa, uh, into Uganda, into uh, South Sudan, the Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of Congo in order to supposedly hunt down the Lord's Resistance Army, which was founded and is headed by Joseph Kony. Well, it's interesting that in northern Uganda, the LRA has been largely defeated there. So the, the crap that they put out uh, through this Kony 2012 is largely false. And a lot of people have figured it out as being false. And uh, that's very, very important that we point that out, that this information is false. They only want to go into these countries in order to mine for strategic minerals like in the DRC. They have diamonds, they have platinum, they have coal tan that we use in our cell phones. Uh, Uganda, they have oil. In the uh, Central African Republic, they have agricultural commodities. And also in Uganda, they recently have discovered oil, and the Western oil companies are flooding in there to exploit the oil. So I think that's the response. Also, one last thing about Kofi Annan. We remember the Iraq War in 2003. They could not get a resolution, a second resolution, through the United Nations Security Council for the intervention into Iraq because at that time the governments in Germany and France would not go along with it. What did Kofi Annan do? As soon as the U.S. said, well, we're going to go in anyway, he withdrew all of the U.N. personnel out of Iraq in order for the United States to begin bombing with their shock and awe and engage in their land invasion in Iraq in 2003. Then as soon as Bush declared mission impossible, they sent the United Nations back into Iraq and they were bombed about three months uh, after they claimed that they had, that they had uh, won the war in Iraq, uh, the UN mission there was bombed, and the uh, UN special envoy to Iraq at that time, who was a Spanish uh, ambassador, was killed in that bombing. So I am just as skeptical, skeptical as everyone here about the role of Kofi Annan in Syria. Uh, they're really just setting the stage for a, quote, humanitarian, unquote, intervention into Syria, which would do nothing except bring about large-scale death and destruction to the people and the land of Syria. Thank you. Yay!